Hey folks, this is pop culture historian Dave Sundstrom. Growing up, one of my favorite television shows was The A-Team, which ran on NBC for five seasons beginning in 1983. The series, in a nutshell, was all about a group of former U.S. Army Special Forces soldiers who were wrongly convicted and imprisoned. After escaping, the soldiers used their military expertise to help those in need while evading capture by the military police. Led by the charismatic Hannibal Smith, played by the equally charismatic George Pappard, the team also included the smooth-talking face man, played by Dirk Benedict, eccentric pilot Mad Doc Murdoch, portrayed by Dwight Schultz, and of course, the tough and loyal B.A. Baracus, brought to life by the toughest actor of them all, Mr. T. The A-Team. Fearless. Dedicated. First on the scene with Chopper A. Exposing the truth. Working for you. Hannibal Smith, B.A. Baracus, Howie, Mad Murdoch, and the Face Man. For a team you can trust, turn to the A-Team. Weeknight, only on TV Land. With every mission, they face dangerous adversaries, showcased incredible teamwork, and always, always, always found a way to escape their pursuers. Oh, and did I mention that during the first 24 episodes of that series, they were aided and abetted by journalist Amy Amanda Allen, better known as AAA, played by the very talented Melinda Coolia. I remember at the time hearing stories about Melinda, or more specifically about how Melinda wasn't exactly satisfied with how her character's development was being handled. From the outside looking in, things seemed fine. I thought Melinda had some really good chemistry with the other actors on the show. Specifically, her frequent scenes with Dirk Benedict would often bring a smile to my face. I've always been a bit of a hopeless romantic, and I don't know. It just felt like maybe there could be something between these two characters. And Melinda's character, she knew how to handle B.A. He may have been intimidating to some, but not to her. Truth be told, in cast photos, Melinda looked completely at ease with these four fellers. And yet, the rumors persisted that there was trouble on the set. So what was it? Was it Melinda? Well, from everything that I've read, it really seems like the issue. The real reason that Melinda departed so early into the series was George Papa. Simply stated, he saw no need for a female character in this testosterone-heavy television show. And maybe he was right. Because after she left, Marla Healy was brought in to fill the void, and after that there was talk amongst the creative team about bringing Tia Carrera on board. Tia, who would later make a big splash in Mike Myers' comedy classic Wayne's World, did finally show up for just one episode during the fourth season. But after that, it was just George and the boys. And like I said, maybe he was right. A show about mercenaries for hire really isn't any place for a lady, is it? Oh, who am I kidding? George was completely wrong. Dead wrong. The creative team got it right the first time with Melinda and her character. Yep, triple A. Amy Amanda Allen was awesome. And the show, well, it just wasn't the same after she left. You know, it's too darn bad Melinda herself couldn't weigh in on the situation. Oh wait, what's that? You say that she recently posted a comment on another one of my A-Team videos where she shares her side of the story? Well, holy Mr. T cereal, Batman. We should probably check it out. So here's what Melinda had to say. Hi, Melinda here. Um, George Prepard was a jerk to women. Sorry, but he was. From the beginning he told me that I was not wanted or needed on the show. When he would come to the set in the morning with lines edited out of scenes, many of them were mine. So there I was, often just standing around in the scene with nothing to do. I never wanted to hold a gun. I'm not good with loud noises. In fact, I requested not to use weapons. My suggestion to the writers was to deal with Amy's frustration at not being able to help the guys. So Amy would privately take karate classes, which of course would mean she would just get in the way. I thought that would be funny, but they declined. At the end of the day, writing for women was not their strong point. Plus, they had a hit on their hands, and it certainly was not because of my character. 
They didn't want to address it, and I didn't want to only have small moments in each show with no character development. So our relationship mutually ended. What was not cool was that the producers, actors, writers allowed rumors to evolve that I was a troublemaker on the set. Never. I was always on set on time, knowing my lines, and ready to work. Towards the end of her comment, Melinda acknowledges that after leaving the A-Team, she initially had a bit of a difficult time finding work. However, you cannot keep a lady as talented as she is down for long. Sure, her series Glitter with David Burney and Morgan Brittany that she co-starred in right after the A-Team went nowhere, but she did land a recurring role in the CBS nighttime soap opera Knott's Landing, and she also found time to guest star on great shows like Star Trek The Next Generation. And in the mid-90s, she again found steady work, this time on the sitcom Brotherly Love, which starred all of the Lawrence brothers, once again surrounded by a bunch of guys. <laughs> Poor Melinda. Well, at least this time they weren't a bunch of mercenaries. Or were they? Looks can be deceiving. I'd keep an eye on that little feller. He looks shifty to me. More recently, Melinda has begun a second career as a novelist and illustrator. Her first novel, Wondago, received rave reviews, and appears to be a clever and innovative first outing from this actress turned author. You know, I love this smile. Melinda, I wish somehow you had been able to stick around on the 18 just a little bit longer. But what the heck, at least we got a season and a half. We'll return after these messages. Oh, I want a Coke. I want some fruit. Hey, I won the Whopper prize. Oh, there's nothing like the one and only Whopper game. One and only Whopper game at Burger King. Just scratch off. And when one and only shows up in any of the right places, you can win a soft drink, a delicious fries, or a one and only Whopper. Or a whole meal. I won. It's not the only Whopper. The one and only Whopper. And the one and only Whopper game. Burger King and Better in the clothes you trust you wool light. Wool light washing keeps the look and feel you love. Trust wool light in cold water to safely clean fine washables. Wool light keeps the fit, the color, the feel you love. Everything soft, fresh, and when clothes look this nice, you feel beautiful in them. Wool light safety keeps the look and feel you love. That thumbnail, cause it's time to go. Dave's got the classics, let the memories flow. TV shows and movies that we all hold so dear. On his YouTube channel, he's keeping memories near. Dave Sunstrom, bringing back the good stuff, oh yeah.